Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, wow, that's neat. Um, I, before we start this presentation, I did want to ask, uh, how many of you have been to physical therapy in the past? A lot of hands. Okay, okay, good. So, <laughs> good, so then um, most of you, the majority of you should understand kind of a little bit about what we do. And so the reason for this presentation is just to kind of uh, show people um, and uh, tell people the importance of staying fit, especially with, you know, uh, this global pandemic that right when we seem to have gone to the end of it, something happens and then the whole world goes and, you know, uh, so we're trying to figure that out still. And uh, so what we find is people are starting to kind of uh, separate themselves from others and not be as uh, social and that includes exercise, right? So you think you're being healthy by staying away from people, and that's true as far as, you know, contracting COVID and whatnot, but what's happening is that because you're more isolated, you're less willing to do physical activity because now your social circles uh, that would push you and encourage you and, and you know, your, your old schedules have changed. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of being active. So, um, you know, what is physical therapy since, the most, since a good chunk of the room here has already been uh, to, to rehab, so I'm not going to ask to sh sh show a hand, see what you think the, the definition is. But um, just some background on physical therapists, so as, as it, it was in my bio, physical therapists now have to have a doctorate degree. So the difference is it's a, it's a clinical doctorate. So similar to being an MD, being an MD is a clinical doctorate. If you have a PhD, that's a research doctorate. That means you're probably in a lab somewhere or molding young minds at some university. Uh, that's a clinical, that's a uh, research doctorate. Clinical doctorates is for individuals that are more kind of, are the, uh, more involved with people, right? Less research-based. Um, so that's what physical therapists are now. So anybody who's graduated uh, recently uh, will now graduate with a, with a doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, you'll still find uh, the occasional physical therapist with a master's degree. Uh, those individuals, you know, they've been practicing for so long, you know, they can physical therapy with their eyes closed, you know, so they're not going to ask them to go back to school. There's no reason for that. Um, so, but one important thing is that as a physical therapist, you know, we truly are the neuromusculoskeletal experts. And what that means is, you know, sometimes you go to your physicians and you say, oh, doc, you know, like my back hurts. And they say, oh, you probably, uh, pulled, you know, you pinch a nerve or you pull a muscle or something or you sneeze too hard and you say, okay, so what, what are you going to do about it? He's like, I don't know, go, go see Miguel. And sometimes people get frustrated with that response, right? Like, oh, I came all this way and I waited to, go, to come see you and you're telling me go see this other person. Fine. Um, and so, you know, we really, you know, specialize in, in, in muscles and understand how they work understanding how uh, the brain controls the muscles, the uh, nerves, understanding how their attachments to bones and levers and, and how all that moves. Your primary care physician, their, their main concern is making sure that, that, that uh, all, you know, they're, they're internists, right? So internal medicine, ma making sure that your medications are appropriate, making sure that you're not taking too much of one thing or another or not enough of, of something. That's their primary concern. They're, you know, they're not gonna help you as much per se as a physical therapist with a, a bum shoulder or you know a crooked knee or you know a, like a hurt ankle that's that's more our realm um so you know and w one of the reasons is because we have so much training in, in, in movement and in, in anatomy and in, in exercise and and understanding how the whole all the pieces of the puzzle work together so you know why does it matter right why why like, okay, Miguel, I, I understand you have all these things and, and, and you seem to know what you're talking about when it comes to muscles and exercise, but why does it matter? Well, you know, we all want to live longer, right? But I think the key is healthier lives. Like, nobody wants to live hooked up to a machine, right? That's, that's not, right? You, you want to enjoy yourself. You've been kind of working your, yourself to the bone to be able to get to a point where now you can enjoy your lives. And now you can travel, you can visit with friends, you can see your kind of, your, your family grow and, and, and become successful. And that's really where physical therapists do their best work. We help you kind of have a, a better quality of life. 
And I think that's what people want to have. People don't want to live, people want to have good quality of life, right? Um, exercise, you know, sometimes people say, you know, Miguel, why don't they just invent a pill I can take and wake up and I can, you know, <laughs> lose 40 pounds and I can be strong. And I tell people, you know what? There is a fountain of youth, like they found it. We have it, it's exercise. And I say that, like, oh, exercise, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. And it, it's hard work, right? Exercise, it's not easy, it's hard work. It's something that we have to do and be consistent, right? I, too many people that I know will go out on a Monday and do an extreme workout, you know, and, and, and they always say, well, you know, when I was a kid, I used to do these things, and oh man, you should have seen me go, I was, you know, I'll give you a run for your money. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, they can't get out of bed because <laughs> they're just completely demolished themselves, right? And then they say, ah, oh, fooey, that's, you know, that's for the, you know, that's for the crows, I'm not gonna do that anymore. So that's not consistent, you know, I mean, it's, I guess it's better than nothing, but it's not consistent. So we have to do, be consistent with our exercises, and that's what truly helps kind of slow down that, the aging process. And also remember, it's easy, right? So we're not asking you to, to you know, do something extreme or, or to join boot camps or anything like that. Anything can, that you can do in your, day, in your daily lives, you can really consider it exercise, okay? Um, starting is truly the hardest part about being active, okay? Having a buddy is really ideal because they, they have your best interest at heart and they'll hold you accountable. You know, when you wake up and you say, oh, you know, Susie, I forgot to have that appointment letter today. You know, I kind of stayed up late a little bit last night. I don't know if I can go. Oh, come on, Mary, you can come with me. Like, oh, fine, you, guilt, you guilted me into it. And then you do it and you might be, oh, this, this, why am I here? But afterwards you feel good for it. You're like, wow, I actually, I'm glad I came. This is, this was good, like, thank you. Thank you for making me come out here and you know what, you weren't my favorite person, but you know, you're, you're okay, you know, for, for helping me come out here. And that's, that's truly one of the things that, you know, that, that, that we see. Um, baby boomers, fun fact, baby boomers are the fastest growing age group in the USA, right? So we all know that people are getting older, people are living longer, you know, thanks to the, to the uh, grandiose advancements in, in medicine and, 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 and all those things in technology, we can now live longer, happier lives, right? So currently, you know, 14.5% of the nation's population is over the age of, is 65 and older. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a pretty like, decent chunk, right? By, by 2029, the national population of those over 65 will be 20%. So that number just keeps growing. And that's attributed to, to people having more information, people being more aware of do's and don'ts. Eat this, not that, right? Uh, take this, don't take that. I mean, before, you know, I met people that have all these wife tales about like, oh, well, you know, my mother always said that when I was, when I would be sick or when I had a tummy ache, I should drink this, I should drink that. Now we have a better understanding of, well, that was actually true. Like your mom was onto something, you know. We don't know how she knew this back then, but she knew and this works. And so now we have a better understanding of, um, of uh, portion control and, and, and diet and exercise and, and uh, appropriate dosage. And so, you know, all those things are helping people live longer. Um, as we age, muscle, strength, and lung function are direct determinants of uh, functional independence. So we know that as we age, our bodies don't stretch the same. It's called elasticity. So we know that, you know, um, I'm sure this has happened to someone in this room that you bump into something and then people say, Mary, what, you have a bruise. You say, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I hit a pillow or something. I'm not sure what happened, <laughs> right? And so we know things just kind of naturally start to kind of get thinner and kind of not as resilient. And uh, it's part of aging, right? There's nothing we can do about that. But with that comes, if we don't kind of take measures to try and prevent and try and slow it down, we know that things like your strength and your bone health and your lungs, you know, when you don't stress them by kind of walking faster and forcing yourself to be out of breath, you're stressing those, those tissues, that's good for the tissue because it keeps that elasticity. If you don't do that, they become more rigid and not as flexible. And then when you want to take that nice deep breath, you'll, you, you'll find it. Gosh darn it, it's kind of hard now. It used to be simple, now it's hard. So here's a, another fun fact. So muscle strength declines by 15% each decade after the age of 50, okay? Whether you work out or not, it's gonna slowly just start kind of slowly go down, okay? And 30% each decade after the age of 70. 
Okay, so that's that's not I mean that's nothing to kind of scoff at. That's a pretty significant decrease, right, in, in strength and in muscles. 45% uh, of women over the age of 65 and 65% um, over the age of 75 cannot lift 10 pounds. Okay, so why is that? Why is that? You know, I mean, what's going on? Is it that you know? I mean, we know women are not the weaker sex. We know that you know without without women we wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> We know men cannot handle things like labor and, and, and having to go unpaid at home and having to do, we know men can't handle that, so why is that? Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of it has to do with, with, with you know, life changes that happen as, as women get older, hormones change, that is a fact, that does happen. So we know that that has an effect on your strength and your overall density, but there's ways to slow that, that change down. There's ways to kind of keep your strength and, and, and keep your, you know, keep your bone density and, and keep your health. You just need to be more active, you know? Sarcopenia means loss of bone, uh, uh, excuse me, loss of muscle. And so this again occurs uh, in, in greater degree in, in women than men. So one good reason for this is because um, we think is that men are more likely to lift weights than women are. And one of the reasons we think is because women get told don't lift weights, you know, like you don't need to lift weights, that's, you're gonna get manly, you're gonna look like a man, right? And, and you tell the young lady, you know what, if you want a boyfriend, you, will, you don't wanna lift weights, because you know, you, you're gonna look manly. So we think this is one of the reasons why women aren't as inclined to lift as, you know, weights or to lift as heavy as, as, as men are, because men wanna have the big muscles in the chest and all those things, and women wanna look more feminine. We know that's not true. So just because you lift big heavy weights does not mean that you're gonna turn into Arnold, okay? Um, but what it will turn you into is, it will turn you into a person who doesn't have as much uh, bone loss, as much muscle loss as the person next to you who, who chooses to not do that. Okay, that much we do know, okay? So, you know, 25% of Americans over the age of 18 report no leisure time activity. So this is people that just want to go home. I mean, these are young people. They just want to go home and just play video games or they, you know, study, 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 and, and although studying is great, we know that physical activity has a, has a huge role in brain stimulation and helping people think outside of the box, right? So one of the things, I talk to a lot of teachers in, in what I do, and one of the things that, that I hear from teachers is saying that how it's unfortunate that some of the schools are decreasing the, the, like the recess periods or PE periods and in increasing more like arithmetic and grammar, okay? They say it's a shame how schools aren't pushing the arts, the musics and those things, and those are shrinking and they're increasing, you know, grammars and, and, and mathematics and the sciences. And, you know, one of the things is, yes, we all know that being well-spoken and, and being able to read is very important. Like, nobody will argue that point, right? but we know that these other things that we do stimulate different parts of our brain, and that helps creativity. The same thing with exercise, okay? You exercise, it just helps the blood flow, it just helps you think outside of the box, it just, it, it's really good for all, for all of those uh, facets of our lives. So, you know, what can physical therapy do for me? Well, you know, we've already talked a lot about these things, right? So it can, it can increase your life expectancy, right? Because the more active you are, the stronger you are, then the better quality of life you'll be, and you'll just live longer and not, in, not on as many medications, okay? Too many people that I know feel kind of cruddy, not because they're very, very sick, but because they take one pill, but that pill helps them with this, but it makes them feel this way. So they take pill two to help fight off the effects of pill one. And then they take pill three, and then it just, it just, it just goes and goes and goes. Where, when the reality is, if you just moved a little bit more and were more physically active, maybe you wouldn't even need pill one. Does that make sense? Maybe, or maybe you would just need one pill versus 15, okay? Um, definitely lessens the dependence on others, okay? Um, I talk to people about, you know, people want to be independent, especially as, as they become uh, the older adult. And being independent for so long and then being told that now you can't live by yourself and you can no longer drive is, is just, it, it's, it crushes people's souls. I've seen it, okay? 
And oftentimes we say, you know, man, if, we, you know, if, if you would just be a little bit more active, if you just push yourself a little bit more to do a little bit more things, then, you know, potentially we, we could have not had this talk. You know, you could have been still living in, in your own house for X, X number more years without having to have these, these talks. So that's a big push that I tell people. Uh, sometimes I think they think I'm joking and they think, oh, that won't happen to me. That happened to Susie, but not me. And then unfortunately they get there, right? Uh, increased strength, improved flexibility. We all know that, you know, like I said before, as we age, we become a little bit less flexible. Okay, flexibility is key. It also helps us uh, not get injured as much. So in Salinas, so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but sometimes the sidewalks aren't perfect, oh, yeah. right? Sometimes the sidewalks are kind of lumpy and, and kind of elevated and raised. So I, I know people who have almost fell because they, they kick the lip and then they stumble and they go like, like, oh, wow, I'm fine. Okay, good. You know, but then they're like, ah, oh, I caught myself and I'm on my back, you know, man, I, I should have fallen. This probably wouldn't have hurt as much. Some of those things are because of flexibility. The tissues are not used to kind of uh, having those like random sudden impacts, okay? So the tissue needs to stay pliable, it needs to stay mobile, it needs to stay elastic is, is the word we use, okay? Uh, increased muscle tone, of course, increased posture. We know that people, uh, we say when people age, they shrink, right? A lot of that ha happens because, you know, when you're young and you're in high school, you're standing nice and tall, you know, you're six foot tall, you say, yeah, I know my husband, oh gosh, he was so tall and, and, and wonderful. <laughs> and then as we age, we just start to kind of do this here, you know, and then we walk like this, right? So we know posture is huge. Uh, posture, you know, the better posture you have, the better your lungs work. Because now your, your lungs aren't being compressed in your chest cavity, right? So you can take nice deeper breaths. It's better for you that way, okay? You can even drive better because you're up nice and tall. You can actually check your blind spots and, uh, and, and all that stuff. So. The body really works in unison, okay? So definitely I'm a strong believer and, and at Balance we're strong believers that if you have one issue with one part of the body, it's gonna significantly affect the other part of the body, okay? Sometimes people don't see the connection. People will say, Miguel, you know, my foot, when I was younger, a horse stepped on it and it broke my foot and I've been kind of limping on it. And, you know, but I'm not here for that. I'm here because my back hurts. And I'm like, well, you've been living on, so you've been doing this for X number of years, and you're wondering why your back hurts. Like, <laughs> okay, well, well, let's work on your back. No, no, but I'm here because I'm, you know. So, so these are some of the things that, that, that we get asked all the time, right? And they say, well, I didn't think of, about telling you this because I didn't see the connection. And that's okay, I'm not expecting you to see the connection, but the more information you give your physical therapist, we can make the connections for you and hopefully come up with a plan that works for the both of us, okay? So before I continue, I'm, I, I want to show you guys this quick video here. This guy. Okay, so this guy they call Banana George. All right. So there's audio, and we'll see how it plays. Oh, it's So he started water skiing when he was um, in his 80s, 
okay? And, and one of the things that he talked about is he says, you know, he felt like a basket case because he was like, I can't do that. You know, I'm an old man. I can't do, be, be water skiing with these people. And, uh, is that me? There you go. And so it's just, um, you know, sometimes we have these self-imposed limitations, on, you know, um, that other people don't put on us, it's us. I'm old, you know, I'm, I'm in my 80s, I can't do that anymore. And he's water skiing with no skis, just on his feet, bare feet. And so uh, they call him Banana George. Um, and so Banana George, well into his 90s, he would water ski and he would do this at like air shows. And he would get pulled behind speedboats and he would just hang out back there and, and do all the tricks and do like the one-legged things and this and that into his 90s. And so, you know, that's one of the things when people say, well, you know, age is just a number. You know, if you, if you tell yourself you're old, then you're old. You're, you succeeded in, in kind of telling yourself you're old. But if you say, yeah, you know, I'm in my 90s, but darn it, I can still do things. You know, I can still be active. I can still have fun. I can still do these, these other things. Then you can do it. You know, obviously it takes some progression, it takes some work, but it's possible. Okay, it's possible. Um, I know oftentimes you guys see people, high school kids or younger, doing all these crazy things and you're like, oh yeah, they can do that. They're, you know, they're, they're 20 years old or they're young, you know, I can't, you know, well, wait till they get my age to see if they can still do that. Um, and so it just goes to show that it's possible, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a message that I wanna drive home. Um, so for, for those of you that haven't been to physical therapy or, or even if you have, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of the things that we do. So most of the time, people go see the physician and they say, listen, doc, you know, I just don't feel that strong. You know, I, I feel like I can't, I have a hard time carrying groceries or, you know, my grandkids come over and, oh man, I can't even pick them up because I'm afraid I'm going to drop them or they're going to break me in half, you know, what's going on? So they come see physical therapy. Uh, this, this, this gentleman here, his, his name is Joey Mello. He's our, our clinical director for Monterey. I don't know if any of you know him, um, but yeah, he's still with us. And uh, so anyways, so you, you come to an evaluation and, and you say, Miguel, you know, I'm here because I feel like I'm not that strong and I want to get stronger and, you know, I have a hard time gardening because, man, you know, I have, I have one heck of a green thumb, but I can't get out there safely anymore because the cobblestones or because what, like whatever it is. Um, and so uh, we say, okay, so we, so we, so we listen, we watch you move, we observe you, we, we see what you can and cannot do, okay? And then uh, we come up with a game plan. We have some measurements and we say, okay, well, let's see what your tissues feel like. Let's see what your bones feel like. Let's see how what your joints feel like. Let's see if you, how you move, okay? Um, we definitely give you homework, okay? So one of the things that we do is I, is, is I say, uh, I'll give you three things max to do at home. And we'll do those in clinic, maybe the first two follow-ups, okay? And, and my assumption is after that, I'll stop doing them with you because that's homework. I'm assuming you're doing them at home, okay? And so we'll stop doing those exact things in clinic and then in, in clinic we'll do the other things because I have machines and I have all these like balancing stuff and we have a lot more things to work with that I'm assuming you don't have access to in your house, okay? <clears throat> so, you know, common ailments, you know, people have, will show up with us to with, you know, neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, hip pain. And they don't always see the connection between the two, you know? They'll say things like, yeah, my shoulder really hurts. And I'll say, okay, well, do we have any neck issues? Well, well why does that matter? I'm here for my shoulder. We'll say, okay, well, just, so, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious, I'm just asking. Say, well, you know, now that you mention it, you know, I did have neck surgery a while back, but th this is my shoulder, this is my shoulder, my shoulder hurts. Okay, well, many people don't understand that there's significant overlap between the muscles in the shoulder and in the neck. Significant overlap. So it's, they often play on each other. Same thing goes for the, like the low back and the hips, okay? If, if your hips don't move very well or they're stiff for whatever reason, a lot of that excess stress is gonna go to the back. And then you'll wonder, man, well, my hips don't move as well, so I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna just kind of move this other way. And I'm gonna, well, that's how you hurt your back, you know? So all these things come into play. Um, so definitely, you know, some things to, uh, that we often see. So, how do, we, how do you begin your own improvement? You know, if you say, okay, Miguel, you, you convince me, I need to be more active. Like, how do I start, right? People often ask me that. <laughs> it's simple, 
stop telling yourself you're old. Stop telling yourself, oh, well, you know, I can't because, you know, uh, just stop. Just start doing something, okay? I'm not asking you guys to train for a marathon, but just be a little bit more active, okay? That's, that's really like the, like the first step. So ways to begin, start slow. Start with simple exercises, okay? Don't, don't YouTube how to do capoeira and martial arts. Just, just slow things, okay? Um, identify people that are doing similar things as yourself. You can say, hey, listen, I saw you doing some Tai Chi. I heard that's good for balance, you know. I want to start doing that. Like, do you mind, like, can we do Tai Chi together? Sure, okay, well, we have a group that we get together every so-and-so, that part of the week, and every so oh, per perfect, I'll be there. Great exercise, right? Easy. You want to advance when it's, when it's uh, the advancement should be gradual and this should be comfortable. You shouldn't be, you know, bedridden for days and days and days. Right? It, it should be something where you're like, yeah, I can feel it, but I can still do things, you know, but I definitely can notice that I, I, I did something, Miguel. I did something. I can notice it. Okay? You also want to vary the intensity. So there's some days in which you want to take it easier, and there's some days in which you want to move it more with the purpose. Okay? So we call that, you want to have variety, like you want to trick your body a little bit. Okay? Our bodies are very efficient. So when it becomes, when you do something that's habitual, and that you always do it the exact same way, the body becomes that, uh, it turns it into a routine and then you won't see as much gains from it, okay? So if you have your routine where you say, okay, I'm gonna do some of these and I'm gonna do some squats and I'm gonna do some of these and you always do it in that order, at some point it won't be as beneficial as if you just change the order. Even just changing the order of things that you do them in will be enough of a boost to, to have you notice like, wow, I'm noticing more improvement now, this is great. Consider physical therapists, right? So in other parts of the world, uh, they refer to us as physios. Um, and for example, in Australia, it's very common for people to go to, to see a physical therapist and say, hey, listen, I want to train for a marathon. It's January, I want to train for this marathon in August. I just came because I haven't been active and I just ate all this food like, over the holidays and I stuffed myself. But I want to train and not hurt myself. Like, what do I need to work on and how do I do that? Great. So they come and see us for a few sessions and then we say, this is your plan, go on and be active. They say, okay, they say, I'll come back in a month or two once, you know, those things are easy and then we'll see how it goes. So, so other parts of the world have a very kind of casual relationship with physical therapists. It's only in this country that we're, we're like the last resort. We're trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, you know? So that's one of the things that we're always pushing. Let's, let's, let's be proactive. Let's not be reactive. Let's be proactive, okay? So, you know, as we get older, definitely we, we got to work on balance. It's, it's always huge, right? You always hear, oh, well, your balance is off. Your, your, your balance is off. Um, and that's definitely something that we emphasize uh, over at Balance Physical Therapy, uh, making sure that people feel comfortable standing on their own two feet, or if they need a cane or an assistive device, then they can do that. That's fine. Um, they want to recruit others. So one of the things is families are great, and you all love your families, but sometimes your families they tend to not want to let you do things, right? And sometimes it's, it's, it's proper because they say, well, grandma, you know, you've been caring for me for X amount of years. I, I want to return the favor. I, I'm, I, I want to be nice. And it's, 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 it's very lovely. And I'm glad they feel that way. But sometimes they got to let grandma do things for herself. Okay? So just kind of let, just kind of explain to them like, hey, listen, this is great. But if it's just to get up to put my dish t 10 feet away in, in the sink, I, I can do that, you know? If it's unloaded the car full of groceries from Costco, then yeah, you can help me. You know, so just kind of picking, kind of picking where they, where they can and cannot help. Uh, keep it simple. You know, if you're really if you're really kind of starting out for the first time, and you say, well, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I'm I'm not really active. You know, my physical activity was chasing the kids around, and and my job was how I got all my my physical activity before. Okay, just just walk a little faster then. You know. Or, or um, I tell people, you know what, just for no reason, just, 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 go, just walk to your kitchen and back to your room. Pretend you forgot something. Just, I'm going to just walk because I want to be more active. That's fine. That's fine too. Yeah. Uh, when, when weather's bad, we, we recommend people walk in malls or Costco. You know, just Costco can be dangerous depending on if you have your wallet with you. But um, just walking in malls, you know, just kind of walking because it's safe. It's away from the elements and things of that nature. Um, and so once you start to really consider how you can incorporate exercise into your daily routine, your daily lives, it's, it's relatively easy. 
So moderate aerobic activity. So you really wanna do brisk walking or something that gets your heart pumping kind of fast. Most days of the week, at least 30 minutes, okay? And so what we tell people is if, if you can walk and you can have a conversation with somebody, then that's okay. If you're walking and you're like, well, <laughs> and then I put the, hold on, I'm out of breath. That's too fast, okay? That's too fast. The idea is you should be able to have a conversation. If, if you want to exchange recipes for Thanksgiving, you should be able to do that while walking, okay? At a pace that's brisk enough that allows you to do that. That's how you know if it's appropriate, okay? Remember, there's some medications that kind of stunt how, how high your heart rate can go, okay? So there's some medication that people take for heart medicine that stops their heart from beating too fast. So, so you don't want to be like, well, I got to get my heart rate up to 120 beats. No, because your heart may not get there depending on, 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 on your medications, okay? So the best way is how you're feeling, okay? And can you have a conversation with somebody while walking, all right? So usually we say that's between two to four and a half miles per hour is how fast you should be walking, okay? Uh, walking speed, just, a, just another fun fact, is another way that we can tell people if they should be living independently, okay? Because think about it, when you cross the street and you have the, like, the walking sign, that's only on for a certain amount of time, right? So all those measures are timed. So oftentimes you'll see us in clinic with the timer and the little measuring wheel and we're walking with, with patients and, and, and we're measuring how far they walk. There's a reason and the reason is we understand that you should be able to walk fast enough to clear the street in a decent time without cars honking at you and making you nervous or trying, you know, God knows what else. Resistance training, exercise, okay? So this is weightlifting, all right? So back to what I was saying before, weights are good. Do not fear the weights, okay? You wanna do weight training at least two days, minimum two days a week, three days will be better. So this is how you alternate, right? So if, if you say, okay, Miguel, I'm gonna lift, lift heavy weights, or weights, excuse me, I'm gonna lift weights two days a week, I'm gonna walk four days a week, or do my, my, my aerobic exercise. Perfect, that makes sense to me, okay? Um, you want to limit it to eight to 10 exercises, okay? So you don't want to make a huge laundry list because you know what, you're going to look at it maybe later. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, so, you know, it's Friday today, I start Monday, I start Monday, I start Monday, okay? So that happens. You want to limit it one to three sets, no more than 15 repetitions, okay? So you want to kind of have things that you enjoy doing, okay? Things that you're like, yeah, I can do this, this is, this is practical, I, I can do this. Like, I don't need to have a massive gym membership or access to it, you know, I, I, I can do these things well, with the handful of things I have. That's perfect. So oftentimes you'll, 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 you'll see us kind of work on people and like, okay, you know, this is a good squat, right? You wanna squat down and you wanna hip hinge and you wanna, so the best thing to do is just start, right? Just start moving, see, see what feels good, okay? If you're gonna start squatting, I do suggest you have, you would put a chair behind your, your derriere, just in case you get a little bit too, too far and you're like, and then you just sit down, okay? So that's, that's my one recommendation. Um, but obviously, you know, if you have time at home or if you're at, at the office and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna do five squats really fast because no one's here and I'm gonna take advantage of this alone time. Five squats, okay, good, better. That's something, right? Balance, we always work on balance. So with balance, you wanna work on different surfaces and, and you wanna vary the, your stance, okay? So oftentimes, nobody walks with their feet so close together, but we oftentimes force people to stand this way because it's harder to stand with your feet narrow, okay? And then we'll, we'll do things like a tandem stance where we have you do like the, you know on TV where they do like the, like the drunk driver thing, you were gonna do this. We have people stand that way, see how they do, okay? And if that's pretty easy, then we have them stand on one foot. So balance is huge, okay? And you know, people say, yeah, well that's uh, like the old person exercises. Well, what I say is this is the start, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys right now an extreme example of somebody who started this way. They're a skier, uh, a Swiss skier. They started this way and then they've progressed their balance training and they progressed their balance training and now it's a huge part of their Olympic skiing kind of training regimen, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys now. This is the other video I wanted to show you. This guy.
It's just balance training, right? It, it's just balance training. Look at this guy. There you go. Oh. Yeah, but the thing I tell people is he started somewhere, <laughs> right? He, yeah, yeah, yes, he, he's a young guy, but he, he didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to do backflips off of the thing, and no. This is how you start. First, you, you narrow your base of support. Then you work this way, then you work on one foot, and then you start adding squishy pads. I know for those of you who have been to physical therapy, you probably stood on a squishy pad and you probably hate it. But that's, that's, that's the start, right? And then we move on to other like flat balls, uh, we call them dyno discs, and you stand on those and you try to do sit the stands or you try to walk on those. And that's, the, that's very foundational stuff, okay? And so that combined with some strength training, combined with some, some cardiovascular exercise and kind of walking regimens, um, I think will make people definitely happier you'll feel better about yourself, right? There's a lot about exercise that gives you more energy and it's proven. There's been people that have been, you know, they're tired and they don't feel like it. And then they get forced by Brenda to do it. Like, okay, Brenda, fine, I'll do it with you. And then you're like, ah, thank you, I, I feel better. I, I actually have more energy now, you know? My sleep is more regulated. I had insomnia before, but now I'm sleeping better. Wow, I'm not taking the z as, as much as I used to, you know? Or, you know what I noticed? My bowels are actually more regular now and they're, that's better. This is great. You know, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing some Tai Chi and I'm doing some walking and I'm doing some balance stuff and this is great. So that's really, really the push. Get people more active, get people more active, especially right now, the pandemic, people haven't been as active for obvious reasons. I'm trying to stay away from large crowds and that I get fully 100%. But what I'm saying is, you know, you're, if you're very kind of reclusive and not willing to do as, be as physically active, you're gonna set yourself up for some, a pretty hard fall potentially. This is my email address. Um, if any of you need to get a hold of me, you can shoot me an email. I respond pretty quickly. Uh, my, fight, my wife hates having to go to my phone, responding to emails, but I, I do get back to people. Um, and so I wanna say thank you so much for having me. Questions? Yes? When I was quite young, which I am not now, <laughs> we used to follow the cracks in the sidewalks. Yes. One after another. Yes. Also, on the curb and gutter parts, yes. along the cement, doing that, walking to school or coming home. Mm -hmm. What do you think about those? I mean, older, I don't think I would do the curb. Because it's too easy to fall. Mm -hmm. But what are those very, very simple things we did as children and were certainly encouraged by the school system? Yes. So I think children are great because they're, they're explorers. Children are, are, are true scientists, right? They said, don't touch that because it's hot. Really? Let me go touch it. You know, so children are great because they're almost fearless and they will try these things. What you're talking about is a very great balanced exercise, right? Phenomenal balanced exercise. And in fact, I gave it to my patients, you know, that are, that are older, I do. And what I say is, I say, you know what? When you're in your kitchen, just walk alongside your counter. You can hover your hand above your counter and walk that way, one foot in front of the other. If you get a little wobbly, yeah. the, the, then the counter's there, it's fine, you know? Sometimes people have a hard time because of movement limitations where they physically can't get the leg to be in front of the other. So they say, I can't do that. My, my body doesn't bend that way. I'm like, okay, let's do the best we can. You know, so those things I think are really good exercises. And oftentimes there's always a way to figure out how to do it. Um, that's what I say. But that exercise specifically, it's, it's, it's really good. I like it a lot. Okay, sure.
Next question. Yes, question. Uh, I understand that Balance is opening a fourth uh, place. Yes. Yes. So most. So some of you might may know John. I don't know uh, who knows John and who doesn't. But um, at the moment, he's not uh, easy, the easiest man to get a hold of, because we're opening up a fourth location in Ryan Ranch. Wow. So the last I heard was uh, the grand. We're gonna have uh, the grand opening where they have the giant scissors and they cut the ribbon. Um, I think it's the first first part of February. Yeah, it's first part of February. So we currently have uh, Salinas, which is. Uh, well, the one that was here in Salinas, and then uh, Monterey, uh, Prunedale, and then now will be Ryan Ranch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's been doing really well. You know, obviously he's, I mean, he, he, he's a great person to work with and work for. Um, I can't say enough nice things about the guy, um, and just that right now he's, uh, he puts a lot on himself and he's really busy. So when I see him and he says, he, and he asks me often, he says, do you need, uh, do you need anything? I say, no. And I know I might need something, but you already have so much on your plate. I'm not going to bother you with my little petty, you know, stuff. But yeah, um, so, so we're excited. We're excited. Uh, I think there's already patients even scheduled to go to Ryan Ranch. So it's, 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 it's happening fast. Yeah, good question. Right now, I go to Prudendale. Ah, lovely. I lovely. Like yeah, who's your therapist? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 wonderful. Yeah, he's very helpful. He's taught me so much about the mind connection with the rest of your body. Yes, so, so we often talk about the word, uh, the word muscle memory gets thrown, a lot, thrown around a lot, right? They say, oh, well, you know, how did he do that? Well, muscle memory. Well, in, um, in uh, big sciencey terms, right, the, the stronger the brain, the stronger the connection between the brain and the muscle, the better the muscle memory is. And that gets established with repetition, right? And what I tell people is, you know, they say practice makes perfect, and what I say is perfect practice makes perfect. Because you can do some, something wrong a million times, it's still wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you do it right, and you persist, and you persist, and you persist, then, it's, then, then, then you got it down pat. And that's where doing things like as children, kind of walking in tandem and doing all these things, because now you're walking, you're like, hey, Steve, Hey Dave, and you're just walking, and you're like, wow, like, how did I do that as a kid? I can't even think that, and I kind of, if I think it, I, I'm gonna fall, you know? And so it's just, it's just repetition. And that, 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 that connection is very strong. And that's another reason why we always advocate for physical therapy after injuries, because that connection sometimes gets broken a little bit, or gets weaker, and then people have a hard time. I know many people uh, that have limps. When, when they walk, they have a limp. There's nothing physically wrong with them, the broken leg healed, but they still limp. And I asked them why, and they said, no, no, I don't. When they're made aware of it, the limp is, is gone. It goes away. But when you start asking them, like, yeah, so how's your mom doing? Oh, wow, you guys are going to the Tahoe. That's great. Tahoe is phenomenal. Don't forget the chains. And they, they forget to focus on their limp. They limp again. Why? Because over the course of the, the recovery, their body's made a new muscle memory. And now the limp is kind of their new normal. The problem with that is the body is not designed to do that for an extended period of time. So doing that for an extended period of time opens you up to all sorts of, of uh, functional limitations and, and impairments, pain, things like that. Yes, question. I have something that I do on my own. Yes. Well, it sounds kind of crazy. When I'm sitting in a chair, I push back. And I pretend I'm a plane. Mm hmm Going back and forth. Mm hmm If I drop something, one time I squat to pick it up, the next time I bend over and touch the ground. Mm hmm It's not a set routine with time attached to it. It's mm -hmm. when something happens that I get the opportunity to try to figure out these things that make me feel more limited. Yes, so we talked about how flexibility is one of the things that helps us stay injury free. But can you do it less than in set? Can you just do it like I'm doing it? Because the opportunity is right here again. The answer is yes. The, the answer is yes. The reason why I always push for sets and have it scheduled is because then, it, then you're really going to do it. 
if you're doing it when the opportunity presents itself, it's possible that you'll go some time without doing it because you haven't scheduled enough time for that, that task. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So if, if that works for you, because that may not work for this little young lady here, right? So that works for you, and that's great that you kind of have that mindset to, to kind of, oh, I got two minutes. I'm going to do as much of these kind of nice, and nice easy stretches, and, and I'm going to get my work in. But if somebody else isn't as kind of motivated as that and needs to have it more structured, they may, that may not work for them. You know, so it's, 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 it's definitely, you know, I say work, uh, find a buddy, work with a buddy. But if you're going to work with somebody who's kind of more like, you know what, let's play by ear. Today, I'm kind of feeling not sure yet. I'll, I'll let you know in a bit. Somebody might get frustrated, like, well, you don't know what the heck you're doing. I'm going to go find someone who's more structured and more organized. But that might work for you. And, that, and if you're successful with that's perfect. Good. You know, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Good point. Yes? Do you have a program that actually kind of teaches you how to fall? We have fall recovery programs. And so oftentimes we have patients uh, that they come in. And so one of the things that we tell people is, uh, unfortunately, we know people will fall. And so you should know how to get up off the floor if you fall. And so we have fall recovery programs. And that's part of your kind of your, your, in, your in PT session that we go over these things. Because, yes, absolutely. If, you know, we want nobody to fall because if you fall, you get, you know, the, the potential for, for injury is really high. But we know that, unfortunately, as much as we train you and as, as, as uh, aware of your surroundings as people are, you're probably going to fall at some point. You should know how to reco self recover. And, and so we help people recover when there's like no, nothing around, if you have a chair next to you or like whatever it is, and we go over those, those procedures with people. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I just wondered if you know if there's like tricks like people are afraid to fall. So if there's a tipping point where you can bundle up or. Yeah. So 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 that's a good question. So one of the things I tell people is you know um, you know whenever there's been a, a lot of research into like drunk drivers, right? And I mean, nobody likes drunk drivers, and I, you know, uh, but one of the things we know is when a drunk driver has an accident, if the vehicle, the driver that's inebriated doesn't really get that hurt. Yeah, maybe some scratches here and there, but you know, they're, for the most part, they're fine. And we say, well, son of a gun, why is that? You know, poor, poor Miguel over here was fine driving home with his family, and he's, he's all sorts of messed up, and this other person who didn't care for Miguel is, is fine. Like, what happened? One of the things we think is because the, the driver that's inebriated is so relaxed. He's not tensing up. He, he, he's not like, oh my God, I want to... He's, he's not doing that, right? So he's just so relaxed, his body just kind of moves wherever he wants to move. Same thing goes with some falls. If you trip and you're like, oh Jesus, and you're going to put your arms out, potentially you're going to break your wrist, right? Or your shoulder. And because you're trying to brace the fall, stop the impact, right? Or the same thing if you're falling off to the side, you're going to do these things. So, yes, there is some truth to that. Um, I don't know if there's like a, a best way to fall. I've heard people say, well, I just kind of go limp and just relax. And I, I find that I don't hurt myself that way. I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess that's, that's one way of doing it. But uh, I don't know, to my knowledge, that there's like the best way to fall. Uh, I'll talk to John about that one, see what he says. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, lady in the back. Does Fallon have any prevention program? We are working on one. We had one before that was an offshoot of our yoga. We had uh, we had a yoga for seniors in Monterey, and we were and, and we were working on an offshoot to do something like that for fall prevention. The problem is. Uh, right when we were working on it, this was 2019, was the first kind of county shutdown. And so we haven't had it back up going yet because we don't know what the, what the public sentiment will be and comfort level will be to have, uh, you know, will people be comfortable having 10, 20, 40 people in the class? I don't know. 
Um, and so kind of trying to find that sweet spot as far as numbers and, and those things is what we're working on. Uh, yeah, because of course we want to keep people as safe as possible. So trying to limit the size and figure out space and distancing and all that, it's just something that we're still working on. Yeah, but that's a good question. Yes? Uh, um, in a couple of weeks we'll have um, news of a, a friend of mine that will be 114 years old. Wow. Oh. And I know her uh, because my mother was a neighbor. And um, her thing was two to three fingers of wine every night. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Every Friday night, she would dance. Yes. She had walked to town three blocks till she was like 105. Yeah. She bent over and pulled her own beads. Mm -hmm. She was active. She had never had children, and she was um, small in stature as far as no heavy weight. So I'm assuming she was healthy all of her life. Mm -hmm. But the thing was that impressed me was her attitude. Mm -hmm. She was happy. She met everybody on the street with a smile and took life as it came. So, I don't know. She's the sixth, she's the oldest California native. Wow. Named Eve. And she was like, there's six people older than her in the United States. Wow. Wow. You know that I mean that's a great story. That's I mean that's that's phenomenal. Yeah, and uh, just the dancing I thought was probably you know. Yeah. She always stood tall, and she always picked those guys who were taller. So she always. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's a great. I mean, that's a great story, and I I think that just kind of goes to show, you know, how how beneficial exercise is, you know, and to her if. I'm, I'm almost willing to bet if they ask her, well, do you exercise? No. I dance. I don't lift weights. I, I, I dance. And, but that's exercise, right? That's cardiovascular exercise. And so, and then like the walking to and from town and all that, and then like the bending over and stooping. And, and so all those things count, but oftentimes we don't put them in the realm of exercise because we think about a gym and we think about like, you know, like the, like somebody, you know, like lifting weights and kind of just doing like, more traditional kind of gym, gym -y style exercises. We don't consider dancing, pulling weeds, you know, all the other stuff, exercise. Uh, sweeping really fast because you're like, oh man, I got company coming, I gotta hurry up and do these things. We don't consider those things exercise. We just consider those, ah, oh, it's just chores. It's, that's what we do, you know. But uh, yeah, no, that's great. I think uh, kind of a, like a um, side note to that is also uh, people argue that convenience uh, as far as food is also a big part of, of, of why the country is where it is. You know, before you, you had to walk to town and do these things, and if you wanted a chicken, you had to go in the backyard, a chicken coop, and do these things, and today you don't have to do any of that. And, but yet we want to eat the same kind of food as before, but we're nowhere near as active as we were before. Um, so a lot of that has also, you know, to do with that. Yeah. Any... More questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, pe people that are social have better attitudes. People that exercise have better attitudes. People that are more kind of secluded, more like recluse, those people, you know, tend if you look at the, the stats, they tend to be more, on, like, more depressed and sad and, and just kind of have more of a, of a glass is half empty type of view of things. But people that exercise, you know, they're, they're a lot happier. You know, they, it's, it's, it's that love of life. You know, you're just like, yeah, this is great. I, I, I love this. You know, sometimes I hurt myself. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I hurt myself here. I can still do things. It's fine. You know, yeah. That's it? Well thank, you. well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me.
So yes, um, if you, if, and then I mean this, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, you guys can please shoot me an email and uh, I'll respond. Okay? All right. Yes. Yes. When you go to the Hudson Gallery, yes. Yes. And everybody helps each other, and um, you actually can make friends. Mm -hmm. And so you know when that person comes, and everybody tells jokes about something silly when you're laying on a table or whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> but that really, for me, was a big positive. Oh, good. Experience. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I think that starts with John. You know that that John sets the tone. Right, John, as as like president and CEO, he sets the tone for expectations for how he expects his company to run. And I think so far we've done a really good job of kind of living up to those expectations. You know, as the company grows, it gets a bit more challenging because you have to have more people. But I think as long as John is at the helm, we should be fine. Sounds yeah. I would like to say something. Yes. I have attended many meetings in connection. Yes. You actually covered so many spaces, you left me breathless. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you had a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. You addressed many things that I was curious about. Mm. You confirmed that things I had established for myself were right. Yes. The school system taught me right. Yes. <laughs> My only problem came when we moved to New Jersey. Uh. They didn't do anything. <laughs> My father screwed rings under the threshold of the door. Yeah. The object was for me to pull myself up and get my chin on the top of it. Oh, wow. I had to stand on a chair, and then Papa would say, are you ready? And I'm hanging for dear life. I actually did that at one time. I there did you go. parallel bars. I did the horses. Mm -hmm. I did the tumbling on the mats. And this was all, thank goodness, we belonged to a gymnastic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, allergy, mm -hmm. a, a gymnastic club which furthered gymnastics. Oh. Yeah. And then when I got overseas and I saw what my cousin was doing and how I had regressed, I was not happy with myself. Uh -huh. But John did come along, and I have been to him. Mm -hmm. But you really, truly expanded. If he has any more children, he's going to have to expand more. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's. It, it's truly a pleasure and an honor because oftentimes people don't really understand yeah. what a physical therapist does. Or, unfortunately, sometimes they go uh, PT and they say, ah, oh, that guy did, was a quack. He didn't know what he was doing. You know, he handed me off to this little girl who didn't know what she was doing. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and so, unfortunately, you know, I recognize that those individuals are in my profession. Um, and we just try our best to kind of show people this is physical therapy. This is what it should look like. And, and if, if, if you had a bad experience, then give us a shot, please. No, give it to me a long way. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. And we want to see the film when it's developed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, I'll turn this off. There you go. There you go.